can tell somebody it's time to give God a praise. <laughs> opportunity to my pastor, Pastor John L. Belser, and Lady Kimberly Belser, and to you, you and you, God's wonderful children. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today, as we um, go deeper into our Lenten season, uh, we celebrate uh, the 40 days um, before uh, we go to Calvary. It's Jesus, as we know, uh, the significance of Calvary and uh, what Jesus has done for us and the ultimate sacrifice that he made uh, by shedding his blood and dying for us on Calvary. And it was not because we did everything so good. It was not because we did everything so perfect, but it was because his compassion fails not and his mercy is new every morning. Our theme that we are dealing with is finding God in difficult times, um, which comes from Psalm, the ninth chapter, uh, verse 9 through 10, and 1 Peter, uh, the fifth chapter, and the seventh verse. Uh, but today I wanted to, um, Holy Spirit led me in a different direction, and I wanted to um, go to, I wanted to lift up two scriptures um, two passages of scriptures, uh, which was Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, verse 13, uh, beginning at verse 13 and, and ending at verse 14, and also Luke, Luke's gospel, the 13th chapter, uh, beginning at the 22nd verse and going all the way to the 30th verse, but uh, for the sake of time, we're going to begin with Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, verse 13 through 14, uh, which reads like this, Enter you in it at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. And then in Luke, the 13th chapter, verse, uh, verse, 20, verse 22, um, reads like this, And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And see, he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, and you begin to stand without, knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Then shall you be, begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in your presence, and you have taught us in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from, they shall come from the cast, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and they are first, which shall be last. 
So I just want to concentrate on what Jesus is saying. He says, uh, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. But wide is the road that leads to destruction. And in this season of our lives, we're seeing so much, uh, so many people have opted out of doing the right thing and going down the right road and have decided for themselves that they will go down the wide road uh, because the wide road has many more exits and uh, it has more, um, more, it's more bright lights and seems as though it's more opportunities. Uh, but there was an old saying that said it like this, the grass is not always green on the other side. I can remember as um, I remember my first time uh, taking a long trip alone back to um, Arkansas where I went to school. And I can remember um, during this time we didn't have uh, the GPSs that actually talk to you on your phone. So you had to pay, pay really close attention or uh, sometimes we would print out the map quest and things like that. But because it was the way that I would always take, and I can remember my mother, uh, as she would always drive me back to school, this was the highway that she would take. And so because I remembered and I paid so much close attention to her uh, as she drove down this highway, which was Highway 57, which turned into Highway 55, which eventually turned into Highway 40. As long as I remember those three numbers, I will be okay. And I will always get to my destination without even having to look at my map because I follow directions. And that's what Jesus is doing. Jesus in Matthew, the seventh chapter, Jesus has been in his uh, teachings of the ser on the sermon on the mount, and now he is here, and he's talking about uh, uh, he's talking about heaven, and talking about the way to get to heaven. And he says, "Broad is the way, and wide is the is the is the way that leads to destruction. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that will lead to eternal life." But we have to make our minds up, and it's our decision uh, to make. We can't. Um, we can't let anybody make that decision for us, but we have to uh, make our minds up that we're going to do what's right. And understand that the straight road and, and the uh, narrow gate is not always the popular way. And it seems as though that not only have the world gotten away from uh, the wide, the, 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 the narrow way, uh, but also, the church seems as though it's getting to the narrow way, the getting to the, the wide way. Everybody has, it seems as though everybody is trying to appeal to the world. And if you go in so many uh, different churches now, uh, you really don't know if you're going into a church or if you're going into a, um, you're going into a auditorium or where you're going because the church no longer stands out. It used to be a time where we used to have reverence and fear of God, that we wanted so much of God, and the same respect that we would give in corporate America, we would give to God. But nowadays, we have people, and they'll fight you on what they should wear. They'll fight you on how they should act in church. Uh, and I remember when I was a child uh, at my home church, we had... Uh, this class that we took, which was called Church Etiquette 101. And I am so thankful for that class. I'm so thankful uh, for the teacher, uh, Sister McDowell, who steered us in the right way. Because the Bible tells us, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. So we got to get to the point where we make our minds up that no matter what the world may say or the world may do, we have made our minds up that we're going to stay on the right road. Jesus is here in Luke, the uh, 13th chapter, the 22nd verse. He's here 
And he said, he went through all the cities and the villages preaching and teaching because during this time, he was no longer welcome in synagogues. And then people came up to him and said, Lord, there are few. Are there few that needs to be saved? And Jesus said, just look around. There are many of us that need to be saved. And understand, my brothers and my sisters, those that are watching, those that are view at a later date, just coming to church and being active in church is not going to uh, secure your seat into the kingdom. But you have to make your mind up. Uh, Jesus' whole mission was, t was for us to go into the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. So we have a job to do. And we no longer can just stand around while the world is going crazy, while there's so many different situations that are going on uh, around us, and just be silent as a church. We have to now make our minds up, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to win souls? How are we going to invite people in? And, 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 and that's what that old song said like this, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. And, and if we ever needed the Lord, we need him right now. There's so much going on in the world. There are children who are even scared to go to school because of children bullying them. And, and now you have children, the, the, the suicide rate for children is at an all-time high because of the simple fact the church uh, has gotten silent. We have concentrated on a dance and a shout and, and, and running all around, the, or all around the church. But when it comes to evangelism, we've now become silent. And we need to get to the point where we need to, where, where we, we don't mind steering people in the right direction. And so Sometimes it may mean that uh, they're not going to understand you, or sometimes they're not going to like you, or sometimes they're going to walk away from you. But Jesus said it like this, that when they walk away, you shake the dust off your feet and you keep on going. Because there's somebody that needs to hear that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So here he is, now he's going through these cities and the, these villages, and he's teaching and he's preaching. It's the same as he was doing in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is, it was teaching on the, on the mount, and he was teaching the, the, the people, and, and everybody who came, he taught them something. So here he is, and he's teaching. He says, there are going to be people that are going to say, uh, Lord, Lord, we, we ate with you. We, 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 you came to our village. You taught in our streets and, 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 and all of these things. And, and now you mean to tell me that I can't get in? And Jesus' response is that the master is soon to wake up. The role is soon to be called. And if we don't get ourselves together, the Bible says in hell we should lift up our eyes. So in this season of Lent, we got to make our minds up that no matter what goes on, no matter what comes our way, that we got to make our minds up for God I live. And for God, I'm willing to die. And I don't know if I'm talking to anybody, uh, anybody who's viewing or anybody uh, that, that, that just may need a word. But Jesus, is, 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 he, he's not a plaything. Timothy Wright said it like this. He's got a way that you can't go under. You can't go over and you can't go around him, but you must come in at the door. Jesus said it like this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But we've gotten so, so caught up in ourselves, and, and nowadays you can't even get people to lift their hands and tell God thank you because of the simple fact we're so distracted. And life has a way of distracting us and deterring us from our responsibilities and everything because we come to church, and, and if we're in church more than an hour, now we're looking at our clocks, now we're looking at our phones and, and everything. We cannot get into the presence of the Holy Spirit because we're too caught up in ourselves. So Jesus said there's going to be so many people that's, that's in the last days that, that are going to be shut out. And those are going to be the people that were in the church. They're going to be the people that, that were falling out. And those are going to be the people that was prophesying and everything. And, and they're going to be the ones that are, being, that are being shut out because they had the chance to get to know Jesus, but they missed their opportunity. 
because they were so caught up in themselves. They were so caught up in what they were doing, and they were so caught up in how they were doing it that they missed the opportunity to get to know Christ. And all my brothers and my sisters, if you don't know who Jesus is, uh, Grandma said like this, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, you better get to know him because time is winding up. And there's so many people I uh, have the opportunity of, and I love uh, having these conversations with my coworkers and sitting and hearing them talk. And so one day, uh, as we, when we finished our work, and after we finished our work, we sat and we waited on the bus to come, uh, the shuttle bus to take us to our cars. So during this time, uh, a young lady asked me to work for her on a Sunday. And I said, well, I don't work on Sundays. And she was like, well, what would happen if you miss one Sunday? I was like, well, I can tell you what would happen. If I miss a Sunday, uh, I won't feel right. And, and during the COVID pandemic, I am just so grateful that God spared my mind and he spared my spirit because in the church, in, in the COVID pandemic, and we couldn't go to church, we couldn't uh, leave our homes, and we had to watch church from, uh, from our um, from our computers and TVs and everything like that. And I just felt so low and I just felt so distraught. So I told her, I said, this is, a, is, 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 a, is something that has been embedded in me. And it wasn't because uh, my mother uh, and my father used to bring me to church every Sunday, which they did, and I'm so grateful that they did, but it was because God got into me. His spirit got into me, and because his spirit got into me, it became, it, 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 wasn't, uh, it wasn't a routine anymore, but it was something that I wanted to do. And so when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior uh, at the age of seven, it wasn't because they told me, oh, if you don't, if you don't go and sit in that seat, uh, you're not going you, to make it to heaven. But it was because I met him for myself. He started moving on the inside of me. And is there anybody that could just testify, when I met Jesus, my life has changed. I don't walk the same way I used to. I don't talk the same way I used to. I don't even live the same way I used to because Jesus came into my heart. So Jesus is here and he's telling them, he's saying, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to miss heaven because they were so caught up on themselves. So as I was saying in my story with my coworker, uh, she was like, okay, so uh, how do you feel about the Big Bang Theory? And how do you feel about evolution and all these other things? And so uh, those kind of conversations, they never really catch me off guard because you got to learn, learn the word for yourself. And so I remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, uh, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created that's all I needed to know right there. God created. So she said, well, how do you know it was God that created? I said, because he said it in his word. I said, and everything that God has said, I'm not going to sit here and try to go against his word because of the simple fact I know God is real because I can feel him on the inside of me. I said, so uh, she was like, oh, but do you know that we evolved from, from apes and monkeys and all those other things? I said, that may be. That, that may be. I said, because a lot of people look like them. But, uh, but the simple thing is, I know him for myself. So I'm, I know God for myself. So this is all Jesus is saying. Get to know him for yourself. Don't let people, uh, uh, and, and this is the thing, and it seems as though we're running into this a lot, where uh, it seems as though the world and the uh, sinners know more of the word than we do, because we're always caught with our guard down. But Jesus is telling us, he said, get yourself together, because there's going to be a time where you want to get in, and you'll be shut out for good. Because you had the opportunity, but you missed the opportunity because you were so caught up in doing what you wanted to do. Jesus is saying, he said, there's going to be gnashing of teeth and there's going to be a lot of weeping because there are going to be people that don't understand. Well, how was it that I, uh, that I did all of this? I came to church every Sunday. I, I was baptized. I accepted you as my Lord and Savior. And I did all of these other things and I still didn't make it in. Jesus is saying, you, you, it just, 
Just coming and just doing it out of routine is not enough, but you got to get it in your, in your heart and you got to get it in your soul that you're going to live for him. And it's not just you living for him on a Sunday and, or, and, and Monday through Saturday, you're doing uh, whatever you want to do. But this is a 365 or 366 if you're counting a leap year. This is, a, is something that we have to do every day. Every morning we have to get up and we got to to tell God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for, for putting food on my table. Thank you for keeping breath in my children's body. Thank you for, for keeping a roof over my head. We got to learn how to tell God, thank you. And we got to learn how to keep him in our hearts. So Jesus is saying, he said, uh, don't forget that, that your, your mission, your goal at the last day is to strive to enter in, enter into that gate, enter into that kingdom. And I promise you, my brothers and my sisters, if you get into your mind that you're going to live for Jesus, in this Lent season, and, and, and Lent, uh, as we know, we're supposed to give up something. So how about this year in giving up something, how about that we, that we strive to get closer to God? Not just, uh, so many people have confused fasting uh, with, with losing weight and dieting and everything, but the Bible teaches us about fasting and talks about how we should go into our room and our secret room and we should pray. And what God sees in secret, he'll reward openly. And there's so many of us that are waiting on God to do something for us in this season. And this is our time to actually get into the realm of the Holy Spirit. If you want God to do something for you, and you want him to open some doors up for you, learn to spend some time with him. Because he says it like this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will come after me, I'll sup with him and he with me. So my brothers and my sisters, it's your choice. It's your opportunity to make your mind up of who you're going to serve. The Bible says like this, no man can serve two masters. You can either love one and hate the other, but you can't serve them both. So you got to make your mind up. Who's it going to be? What are we going to do in this year? How are we going to get closer to God? We got to do as what Jesus told them in Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto us. But we cannot do that if we're so distracted. So I want to pray real quick. Father, help us to rid ourselves of distractions and things that have tried to overcome us. Because you said in your word, God, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So God, in this season, in this Lent season, we want to go after you. We want more of you, God. We want to be who you have called us to be. We want to be the preachers that you called us to be, the teachers that you have called us to be. We want to be who you have called us to be, and we want to walk the way you have called us to walk. God, so we ask that you would just take our minds off things that are not of you and put our minds back on you. And we'll give you all glory, all honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is your latest from FBC. Come hear what the Holy Spirit is saying through the vessels at First Baptist Church. Sundays at 9 a.m., we are in our live services. Every Wednesday at noon, get a word to inspire, educate, and help you grow during our midweek Bible class. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, Join us for our enrichment class, a.k.a. Sunday School, via teleconference, where we will take time to break down the key aspects of the Word of God so you can understand this great life we live as Christians. And you can stream our services and Bible class via our social platforms. So invite a friend, a loved one, and get inspired, educated, and elevated in the Word of God and worship at FBC. We are asking all members to assist by making a commitment to donate weekly, 
bi-weekly, or even monthly. All donations will go into our debt-free fund to liquidate our mortgage. If you have further questions, you may speak with any member of our finance ministry or our debt-free ministry. The food pantry is open on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for drive through pickup. We are currently looking for extra hands to assist with lifting boxes. Please contact the ministry leaders if you are available. Thanks to all who assist weekly, and God bless. For all of these announcements and more, you can log on to our website to keep up with ministry, outreach, and other community information. We encourage not just for you, but for you to have your family and friends go to our social media platforms. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can get notified every time we are live. If you would like to be a blessing to First Baptist Church, it's easy via our giving platform. We encourage you to email or call us with your praise reports because we know God is still manifesting his promises, even in a pandemic. God bless. And this is your latest from FBC.